Scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, throw that beautiful champagne footage. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, where the bubbles are crisp, the secrets are smoother than silk, and the gossip flows like the finest champagne. Big up yourself, Empress. Glasses up to the streets that never sleep and to the secrets running deep. Let's get it. Champagne Secrets. Welcome, my loves, my beauties and bows, to the chalet <laughs> located in Champagne City, baby. You see it. You see it. <laughs> Come join me, the Empress, for some grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we give classy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, then come on in. And if you're a non-alcoholic kind of confidant, grab you a non-alcoholic bubbly and get in here. And if you're joining us in the morning, throw you some orange juice in and make it a mimosa. It's all good. Tell your friends about us and consider becoming a confidant yourself. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button so you'll be notified when we jump into the chalet for another show. As for what I'm sipping on, I am sipping on my Moet and Chandon Imperial Rosé. You already know. Go ahead and drop in the comments and tell me what your favorite beverage of choice is. <laughs> so, if you have your glasses and you have them filled to the rim. Go ahead and lift them high because it's time for our affirmations and positivity. Are you ready? Let's go. I am powerful, like a blazing fire, fierce and unyielding. My strength radiates from within, a beacon of light in the darkest of times. I walk with purpose knowing that I am capable of achieving greatness. I am a force of nature, my potential limitless. I harness the power of my mind and my spirit, shaping my reality with intention and determination. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, I embrace transformation, knowing that each challenge is an opportunity for growth. I stand in my power, unafraid to shine brightly. I am a warrior, a leader, a creator of my own destiny. I am powerful, and I choose to use my power to uplift and not tear down, leaving a trail of positivity and inspiration in my wake. So cheers to you, confidant, for you are worth it. Didn't that feel good? <laughs> the more positivity you add to your life, the more positivity you'll draw to your life, and the less mess you'll have time to be entangled in. <laughs> now that's a message. Now let's get into this Married to Medicine reunion part one. You ready? Scoot up for a second and let's chat. Okay, confidants, let us start off like this, right? I hate the incohesiveness of the attire. I did. I hated it. There was no rhyme, no reason behind it. It looked all over the place. 
I feel like the attire was more cohesive at the Met Gala when they had on all black because this was a mess. <laughs> but my top looks were sweet tea and heavenly. Phaedra's dress, it was a gorgeous dress, but it wasn't a Phaedra dress, if you know what I mean. And her hair was all wrong for it. That dress was a dress that you would probably see a Kenya Moore in. It looked like it would have been more fit for a Kenya Moore. Phaedra looked swallowed up. <laughs> Andy looked like he just grabbed a suit from the back of his closet. He looked like he didn't care. Like, let's just get this over with. Toya looked stuffed in a tutu. Kwa looked like she was going to a luau. Yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> but y'all, real talk though. When this first came on, when Married to Medicine first came on 10 seasons ago, I fell in love with the show, but... I started to see it was feeding into a stereotype of black women. Angry, vindictive black women with no loyalty, which is really sad because this was supposed to give us the upper echelon of black women. Doctors and doctors' wives making it and living their best lives. And it showed us like time and time again that no matter how high up you go, you can still live in the gutter. You know what I mean? Um, for me, the queen of the show is still Mariah, even though Mariah isn't on here anymore. But I really think casting Sweet Tea for this show was poor taste. I do. I do. Not because I have a problem with her, but because I knew they were going to eat her alive. I knew it. Now, don't get me wrong, because she has some comebacks for them, but the ladies on this show are cutthroat. I mean, cutthroat. And I think they set her up by putting her on this show. These are a group of older women, so there's an age gap here. That's why Dr. Jackie catches it the way that she does, because she's she's from a different time. And that's what people don't get. That's what they're failing to realize. She's from a different time. So it's not that she's being the mean girl. You know what, watch this. If we put a bunch of our parents, and I mean those of us who are over 45, 45 and older, Put our parents together on the show and see what you get. And I'm not talking about the ones whose parents still want to be in the club. No. I mean those of us with seasoned parents. The ones who will tell you I can look through muddy water and spot dry land. <laughs> the ones who tell you if I tell you a hand dip snuff, you better look under his wing and get some snuff somewhere. <laughs> those are the ones. The ones who use terms like quicker than a New York second. And the infamous I brought you in this world and I will take you out. <laughs> see, y'all just looking at her demeanor and you don't realize that demeanor is from a different time our parents would give somebody a cold shoulder in 2.2 and not think twice about it and again i'm not talking about the ones who are just hellish like tisha's mom from huntsville no i mean the seasoned mamas the ones who will cut you clean off if you exhibit a behavior they don't like the ones who would look at you and tell you, baby, that girl ain't good for you. Or that man ain't the one. Yeah, that that's the 60 and up group. <laughs> that's the group where I'm not going to fight you. I'm just going to check you. And that baby girl, honey, that is a check. See, that's the group that will look at you and tell you you're doing too much. Stop over-exaggerating. This was the generation that told us, sugar, keep a clean house. And make sure you always have clean underwear on when you leave the house. Because you never know. This is the generation that would tell you, stop being so nasty. And watch your mouth. You remember those people? But see, we've forgotten about that time. The time when our elders were the ones that we looked up to for advice and sound doctrine. See, now we get all of our advice from Instagram. But on the flip side, the term baby girl was also a term of endearment. Hell, I'm 47 and I still get called baby girl. But I'm not offended by it because I understand it's an endearing term. But this is what we call being nice nasty. This is what we call the nice nasty generation. That would get us together in the nicest way. But you just knew you got got. <laughs> this was that generation. But see then you have the middle group. Who is the not so heavenlies. And the Simone and Toya. Who say the first damn thing to come to their mind. See this is that group. This, this is my group. The 
45, 46 to 55 age group, where if you come from me, you're going to hear from me group. See, this is that group. The you can say what you want, but make sure you come correct group. This is the if you knock on the door, I'm going to open it up. So choose your struggle group. This is the group that will look at you and smile because you really don't want what you think you want. See, this is that group. But see, this is the generation that also lost tact. See, where the older group was nice nasty, this group just became nasty. Some of us are just nasty. This is the group that would tell you like it T.I. is, whether you wanted to hear it or not. This is the I warned you first generation. <laughs> See me, I'll tell you in a minute, you pushing. Hold on, you pushing. And that's my way of telling you, back the hell up. See, this is that group. Then you have the 30 to 44, 45-ish group like Sweet Tea and Quad who are establishing their presence and they feel like they have something to prove because they're right in the middle. See, it has nothing to do with money because there are a lot of rich fools out there. <laughs> so it has nothing to, to do with money. They are establishing what they want their presence to be before they get set in their ways. This is the group that's not quite as feisty as the 20 to 30 year olds who are still ready to fight if the wind blows the wrong way, but it's the I feel I need to prove to you that I fit, that I still got to make a point to let you know who I am group. See, this is that group. Oddly enough, even though there are exceptions to the rule, the 30s to 40s don't fit with those who are in the upper age groups there's a different dynamic there so you take sweet tea who's in her 30s and you place her with these older women who've been married to medicine whether as a doctor or a doctor's wife and they've been there for a while and she's married an older man and now you have a problem now you have a problem for one She's already said she had to join a group with other women who date older men to learn what it looks like to date older men and to have support. That in itself means you're dating in another league. And she's upset with Jackie for baby girling her, but on that cruise, on that trip that they took with the group, her husband basically did the same thing. And I think, could be wrong, but I think she, he gave her the forehead kiss when he did it. So, I would rather have seen Sweet Tea on a show like Bell Collective or something like that. Or there should have been a show for younger doctors and younger doctors' wives. Or change the cast entirely so you can capture a younger audience. Because from day one, I knew this was going to be a problem. It was too much of an age gap. And it's not that there's anything wrong with Sweet Tea, don't get me wrong. She just doesn't fit the narrative that has already been established. She's still young and impressionable. This group is older and set in their ways, you get it? She needs a spinoff that caters to her age group. And Quad needs a spinoff that caters to former doctor's wives or life after medicine or something like that but something that fits where she is now because she's no longer married to medicine and I don't know why the hell Phaedra is on this show <laughs> I really don't but it's all of these dynamics on one show does not work and that is why the show is starting to become lackluster so we start off and Andy is talking to the girls and he gets to Sweet Tea and he asked her if she's done anything special to prepare for the day and she says that she got some vitamin D, honey. <laughs> See, this is what I mean, something to prove. So she's sitting on the stage with the ex-wife and she feels like she has to prove herself. She has to let it be known, he's mine, that's mine. <laughs> but what's understood need not be explained, sweetie. Sometimes in trying, you can try too hard to the point where you look insecure. I would have just said, Andy, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. <laughs> you don't need to pay quiet. No, never mind. She's the past. You're the present and the future. So why even address her? But like I said, this is the age group that has something to prove. So 
Quad, who feels the need to continuously let her know that she's been there, says, what type of D did you have? And Sweet Tea responds, wouldn't you like to know? And Quad then says, I had it already, see? This is what I mean, gotta prove a point. Please help me understand why. Why do we as women feel the need to let the current know that I had it first? Why do we do that? If you're done, and they're done, then be done, but no. So many times we hate to see someone else get the treatment we thought we should have gotten, or we'll try to sabotage it because we didn't get it. We gotta stop. Quad is way too beautiful of a girl for this. So everyone is telling her it's a little different now, and it is. So here's my thing with Quad, right? Quad is an opportunist. When she came on the show, she saw an opportunity, but she took that opportunity by stabbing Mariah in the back. She did. When she got the come up, she was going to take it no matter who she had to leave in the dust to take it. I was always taught, you never burn a bridge because you never know when you'll need to cross it again. Now if that bridge was burnt because they burnt it, then so be it. But you, you never burn bridges. You just learn how to cross another one. (laughs) So... Andy, y'all, y'all, Andy is so messy. So he says, Miss Qua, Miss Qua, she had it, she had it. And Qua says, have the t-shirt. And t- Sweet T says, why? And that's my point. I'm not going back and forth with you. You're his past. I'm his present. I hope it keeps you warm as he does sleeping next to me at night. But see, now it's all about the comeback, the read. I don't need to read you. You seeing me happy is all the read you need. (laughs) So, Andy goes on, and it looks like Sweet Sweet Tea pulled a heavenly on heavenly because she left notes all around for everyone, but this is what I'm saying. She's still young, about the same age that Heavenly was when she did it. But see, Heavenly, Heavenly is a hellion. (laughs) She is. Her tongue drips venom. Saying whatever comes to mind isn't a sign of maturity, it's actually a sign of immaturity. But in the toxic world that we now live in, people love viciousness. The more venomous it is, the more they love it. It's like that movie Gladiator when they were in the Coliseum and the more blood there was, the more ignited the crowd became. Yeah, that's how we are. We're like sharks in the water with with blood in it. (laughs) We're just about ready to tear each other apart just to get to it. That's how we are and heavenly feeds into it. So during this reunion, there are flashbacks to the messy stuff that happened within the 10 years and most of them was like, of all the stuff you could have shown, why this? (laughs) Just why? But you know, Andy is one of the queens, so couldn't be a reality without some doses of mess but we get into the Phaedra and Quad situation and they flash back to when Phaedra brought Quad to the pre-wedding get together and this dating situation with Dr. G and the situation with Quad getting out of the casket baby you couldn't have paid me to climb out of a casket no ma'am no sir you couldn't have paid me not at all you couldn't even pay me to show up at this girl's bridal event But that's quad. She's dramatic. She loves an opportunity. She loves an entrance. She loves a moment to be dramatic. That's just her. But they start discussing the situation with Phaedra changing her flight. Quad said that she felt like she turned her back on her when she found out that the rest of the girls had an issue. But if she really knew Phaedra, then this wouldn't have come come to her as a surprise. Phaedra is a snake. She always has been. She's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Everything about Phaedra says faulty. Everything. She tries so hard to come off as this southern belle like Sweet Tea is, but she always shows her true colors. Always. So I don't know why Quad even trusted her. She trusted her and she got big. (laughs) She did. So... They get into this whole thing with dating Dr. G. And Phaedra says that she didn't date him. Sweet T stated that Dr. G even said that they kissed. And Phaedra said that it didn't happen. So they also discussed this whole situation with the $4,000. And 
Phaedra said, even if she did ask for it, he didn't have it. <laughs> Y'all, I believe she did. I believe she did because that's Phaedra. Just like I believe she knew everything Apollo was doing. I, you can't convince me otherwise. You can't. So then, uh, Heavenly tells Sweet Tea there's a lot she doesn't know. Sweet Tea tells her don't speak on her man or her marriage. Not so Heavenly stays in everybody's business, but she never shares any of her own. She doesn't. She only shares the good stuff or the sexual stuff or the nasty stuff about her and her man, her man, her man. <laughs> so I agree with Sweet Tea. Not so Heavenly talks too much. She does. So... Then they go into this situation with Phaedra and Quad and this so-called friendship. And everyone says that they believe Phaedra was being messy bringing Quad to the bachelorette party. They also said they believe that she asked Dr. G for the $4,000 and purposely called Heavenly from the mixer event. And she did. She, Because Phaedra is messy. <laughs> Phaedra is one of those professionals at throwing a rock and hiding their hand. That's Phaedra. So, um, Andy asked her if they can salvage the friendship between Phaedra and Quad. Phaedra says she doesn't want friends that will drag her if they feel like she's not rocking with them. Listen, y'all, Phaedra only cares about herself. That's the thing. She cares about herself and money. If it does not fit Phaedra, she doesn't care. Y'all know people like that. Y'all do. So Quad says that she didn't drag her, but I really think that she did because of what she did to Toya when she was upset with her and accused her of having that girl's house robbed. So I believe Quad would do something like that. So then they get into Toya, and here's my thing with Toya. Toya is the epitome of, you're not a boss, bitch. You're a bitch, boss. Yeah, that's that's Toya. Toya is one of the women who feels like having money gives you the right to be arrogant and uppity and snooty and snobby. I feel like she married the nerdy guy she could control. He was a doctor or became a doctor, however it went, and she knew she could control the money too. One of the things that she said was when she was younger, she used to wear pro wings. And honey, I know a thing or two about pro wings. <laughs> I do. Pay less shoes, pay less everything because my mom wasn't well off. So shoes, boots, heels, all of it came from pay less. I understand. Simone tells her she needs to allow her husband to plan something and not criticize it because Toya is extremely critical of everyone except herself. She says she doesn't think it's realistic because when he met her, she was like that. So she's always been the mean girl in the relationship. But she said something that was key because she wore pro wings and got teased, as I did, so I understand. But what she said was when she got older, she wanted to live up to others' expectations. See, that's what I mean by saying having something to prove. I want to be able to prove to you that I fit, so I took on this persona of what I think fits, whether it hurts someone or not. And somehow she feels like raising your expectations means being a bitch. So she became persnickety, she became uppity, she became rude, and having high expectations doesn't give you the right or doesn't mean that you have to be rude. It doesn't mean that you have to give off this persona. So then they get into the whole thing uh, with the wine and the Met Gala. And Andy asked whether the wine was given to Toya. And she states that she was given so many for free. So she basically says yes and no. They give her um, 10 cases per year, right? But she has to have parties to bring recognition to her business. So in her donating to the wine to the situation, it is taking away from her being able to use it for her parties. So she basically says she feels like it was a generous donation, right? Andy says he feels like it was a smart business strategy to use it to serve on a large TV show such as they're on. And Toya says that it was, but they didn't want it. Y'all, I'm so confused. I, I really am. I am so confused. But not so heavenly said she still could have paid the thousand dollars to show that she was a team player. So I'm guessing Toya felt like the wine was enough. But here's the thing. 
if you're trying to live up to the expectations of others, you know, this expectation that she spoke about previously and show how much money you have, wouldn't you want to give the money? I don't think Toya and Eugene really had the money that she portrays. And that's really my opinion. Y'all remember she got that huge house and it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. Baby, that, what was it, two, three-story walk-in closet? Baby, bye. Amazing. This dream home that she had, you got it and downsized. I think Toya overspent trying to live up to an expectation. And I think because her husband, to, her, to him, she is a prize and a pretty girl with a nice body. I think he let her get away with a lot and I think they're paying for it financially. Now that's my opinion. I don't think they have what they once did. Because what was the problem in giving the thousand dollars? But I absolutely think not so heavenly was out of order for doing what she did at the gala. It was poor taste and poor behavior especially for a doctor so then they get into this whole situation with dr jackie and i did a video on this it was matter of fact it was one of my first videos but here's my thing like i said in that video we cannot take away from her her experience just like she has patients that are probably having real life pains there are also patients who over exaggerate their pains otherwise we wouldn't have people hooked on pain medicine we wouldn't have pain management clinics that have been developed to monitor people who say they are in pain and really are not now I do not like generalization. I can't stand it. I cannot stand for a person to put everybody into a box. You know what I mean when people say, oh, black people this, or white people this, or women this. No, everybody is not in the same box just because the ones you happen to cohabitate with or the ones that you happen to deal with happen to do this. So I do not like general generalizing, right? But to say it doesn't happen is false, and we know it. We all know it. But we are so quick to jump on the hate train. Protect black women. Protect black women. Well, the truth of the matter is, some of us need to be protected from ourselves. Because some of us are part of the problem. And some of us are the reason that she had to even make a statement like this. Carly Russell, did you forget about her? I hope as we go further into 2024, we stop being so sensitive. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. Because some people, because some people, some people said she was right. Some people knew she was right until they saw the train going past and decided to jump on it with everyone else. My problem is, where was the outrage when it was said, when it was aired? Because if there was that kind of outrage then, it would have been blown up then. Because if we want some real honest truth, I was one of them. Yeah, uh-huh, for the hellions that'll try to jump in my comments saying that you just want to be on Dr. Jackie's side. No, 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 that's some truth for yes. I was one of them. I was one of the women that she was talking about. I knew I would have to be induced when I got pregnant because I contract, but I don't dilate. So when it got closer to my due date and I was in pain, I would blow my doctor up because I was miserable, I was tired, my ankles were swollen, my legs were swollen, my back was hurting, and I was simply tired of being pregnant. And my doctor would look at me and tell me, oh honey, that's just a part of pregnancy. You're over exaggerating. But he also would still check me to make sure that everything was fine now with my baby boy I actually did have an issue I had a kidney infection had to be hospitalized and ended up having a c-section and guess what he treated me no differently than he did when I was over exaggerated see I'm different I'm different from most of y'all and see that's why that's why I and this channel is an acquired taste because I'm transparent with a purpose I'm not gonna jump on a train just because everybody else is going there no because I don't know where that train is heading 
<laughs> I don't. I'm transparent with a purpose. I can admit when I'm wrong. And if others would have done the same, they would have spoken up and not let her be dragged the way she was when some of us know she was telling the truth. But it's because we've just become heartless. We're so damn heartless. So, she tells everyone who supported her during this time. And she stated that she hadn't heard from Quad, but she understood because they hadn't really spoken prior to this. Quad stated that she was going through her own thing as well. She said that she sent her a text message, but she couldn't be there like she wanted to or like she should have been. So then they get into Quad and his casket resurrection, which, which was absolutely tacky. It was tacky for Phaedra to propose it, and it was tackier, tackier for Quad to even do it. So then you have this these recaps of the deterioration of the relationships between Quad and the group. Quad states that she knows she's done things to contribute, and she states that she's repeated some things that that were said to her and she was wrong now this is the first time i've ever really heard quad take accountability and admit that she's actually done things that were wrong up until this point quad has always pointed the fingers at others and i think quad has to remember what she did to mariah who was her first friend when she turned on her friend for the group now that thing is coming full circle back to her that's why I keep telling y'all, reevaluate your friends, these friendships that you call friends these days, because it seems to be that friendships only are friends if it can get you to the place that you want to be. And once you get to the place that you want to be, then you no longer consider them your friends. And that's what Quad did to Mariah. I think what Quad is feeling is a taste of karma, and that itch with a bee cares nothing about tears when she comes around. <laughs> she doesn't. Remember, these are the same girls that Quad says she didn't need. The same ones that she invited to her sister circle, only to hear her tell those girls that they were her true friends. I think it didn't pan out the way she wanted it to. She found out the grass was greener because it was artificial, and now she wants to repair what was broken. See me, I'm a sucker for an underdog. I am. I am a forgiver because it doesn't take anything away from me to do so. So I can feel where she's coming from. I probably would have forgiven her. I would have. I, I would have. I'm a sucker. <laughs> I probably would have forgiven her to move forward because I don't hold grudges. I can't. It's too much weight to carry to be mad at someone for years and years and years. And I think that, the, that that's the problem with these girls. They don't know how to truly forgive and move past it. Mend and repair or let it go completely. Plus, this is Quad's income, so that's another reason to fix it. She doesn't want to be removed from the show because it's her source of money. Not saying it's her only source, but this, is what, this was the source that put her on. I think Quad is good at putting on a good face and coming off as the victim. And we have a habit of believing the pretty girls. We do. We believe Quad and we want to rally behind Quad because she's the pretty girl. If Quad wasn't pretty, she wouldn't have the people rallying behind her the way that she does. Let's just be honest about it. If she looked now the way she looked when she first came out, she would have been given the door. We got to be honest. So, they get into Toya's trip with Quad there, and Quad says that she really wanted to be there for her, and they all told her, no, you said you were only there for the check. I think Quad is about money, and we all know people like that. If there's an opportunity to get money, they're going to go for it. But if you watch my Caught Being Ignorant Unit vid uh, video on Grapska and the Tree, then you know money-hungry individuals can be dangerous because they will watch you sink so they can rise. Quad said she perceived her, inv her invitation the wrong way. She said she really didn't think that Toya wanted her there, and she apologized. So Andy asked Jackie what she would have liked to see from it all, and Jackie said that she would have liked to hear Quad say, I messed up, and I want to fix it, basically. Quad said if she feels welcome, um, then she would, and Jackie says, well, friendship goes both ways. 
She said she would have loved to just hear Quad's voice. Quad says that she wanted to call Jackie when things were going on, but not so heavenly, told her that it was not a good time, that she was not in a good space. And here comes Simone. I think Simone has some other things going on because she gets more and more bitter as the seasons continue. It's not always what she says, it's how she says them. She's just angry, angry all of the damn time. She doesn't she doesn't have a happy medium or an you know how some people have an escalation? She doesn't have an escalation. It's always zero or a hundred. And to me, that's not good. It's, it's not good, especially in the position that she sits in. So, Heavenly says she is the one who called Quad because the consensus was that Quad was the one that resurfaced the video of Dr. Jackie. Quad is looking dumbfounded now. I do not believe that she was the one who did it. I don't. I don't think that she has that level of maliciousness in her. I really don't. Now, Quad's level of vindictiveness is to treat you like she doesn't need you and to throw her happiness in your face. But something like this, I, I don't think it's her MO. I, I just don't. Now, then we get into the situation between Quad and Simone. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. I would, I would have expected this from not so heavenly, not Simone. So they get into the fact that Quad doesn't reach out, right? And um, uh, Quad says, well, y'all don't reach out to me either. And Simone says, well, she doesn't, meaning really that she no longer does because this has really been going on for seasons and seasons now. Simone says it doesn't really matter because when Quad had stuff going on, she still showed up. And she asked Quad to name a time when she's done the same. Quad asked if they were friends. Simone basically says it really doesn't matter. So Andy proceeds to ask Simone if Quad had an incident where she showed up for her. And Simone states, yes, after the Mad Gala, there was a tragedy that happened with Quad's niece passing away in her pool. You could see Quad was asking her to stay away from the subject. So I really didn't like that Simone pushed it. I didn't like that she pushed it in that moment, but this is what I mean. I think Simone has underlying issues that are going on that they're really not touching on on the show. I don't like that she revealed that, but I also didn't like that Quad's cry seemed forced. Now, that's to me. That's just me being honest. See, I watch Investigation Discovery all day long. So you can't go from a full breakdown to completely composed in 2.2 seconds and expect me to believe that it's genuine. Not saying that she doesn't feel something for what happened, but I'm saying in that moment, it did not come off as genuine in that moment. I saw no tears fall. I saw no redness in her eyes. And she went from a full-blown breakdown cry being hurt that Simone brought it up to absolutely composed and poised when she responded to it. So, Quad changes the subject, which I'm glad that she did because it's a touchy subject. And it involves more than just them on that stage. There's a whole family that's experienced a lot. But she says Simone told her she doesn't need time to repair the relationship because she hasn't done anything to her. She just doesn't want to make Toya upset with her. Uh, Simone goes on to say that she didn't say that. Heavenly basically says that she did, but it's paraphrasing. Simone yells out that Toya's the one that's really been there for her as a true friend, and she never wants to do anything to upset her. And Heavenly says, but that's not Quad's fault. And I agree with not so heavenly in this moment. I really do. I agree with that point because one relationship has nothing to do with the other. We got to stop. We have to stop this pick a side narrative because to me, that is the most asinine thing ever. If you're friends with me, you can't be friends with her. Excuse me. I'm a grown ass woman. <laughs> and you should be too. If we can't learn how to be cordial and just get along and just talk it out, even if it means agreeing to disagree, then everybody is immature and everybody needs to grow up. I mean, for real, we got to stop. I don't know where the narrative came from, but it needs to go back. So 
Andy says he wants to hear from Quad. And Simone says, well, I can't say she says because she's been yelling for the last five minutes. She yells, if she's honest, I'll stay quiet. If she lies, I'm talking. I think Simone has horrible communication skills. <laughs> I do. You don't have to scream to get your point across. But when you feel like someone is playing in your face, sometimes those emotions get in the way. And as much as I think Quad does lie, Simone has poor EQ or emotional IQ. She cannot control her emotions. And that's a problem. It is a huge problem. So... So Quad basically says that it's true. She did reach out and show her love during that terrible time and that she still struggles with it today. And she basically let letting her know that she still needs that. So um, they basically go to a break and Quad asks Jackie if she really believed that she would do that to her. She says that she really wouldn't do that and it hurts her to believe that she would do that. My problem is where's quads tears there are no there are no tears it makes me believe that it's all for show and i don't want to believe that about quad because i really do like her but it comes off as completely insincere jackie tells her i'd rather lose a friend than lose myself and here's my thing if it's genuine sometimes it really does take a tragedy to show a person who was truly there for them before the tragedy struck and sometimes we have to give people space to recognize that. I mean, if it's true, if it's meant to be, God will bring that thing full circle. But I think first she needs to reconcile her relationship with Mariah. Drop in the comments and tell me what you feel about the reunion part one. And be respectful because this is a safe space. My channel is a safe space for people to come and communicate and have discussions about whatever I discuss on my videos. However, be respectful when you're doing it. <laughs> Confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink till we meet again. Ta-ta.